We begin in Battleground, B.C., where the provincial government has just come off a throne speech with a lot of promises about big bucks in the future from natural gas. For more on that and all things B.C., we turn to our Richard Zussman in Vancouver. Richard. Hi, Daniel. Uh, Christy Clark has spent the day defending the Prosperity Fund. It was first announced yesterday in the speech from the throne. There will be a slush fund for the B.C. government to put uh, revenues from liquefied natural gas. The thing is, British Columbians won't see this money to at least the 2020s. It will start accumulating in 2017. And the first goal is to pay off the provincial debt. But Premier Christy Clark said the reason why the Prosperity Fund is essential is so the British Columbians know where their money is going. I believe we need to set up the Prosperity Fund in such a way that we can ensure the money will always be spent wisely. And it won't just go to growing government. My view is we have to grow the economy, not grow government. Adrian Dixon, the NDP, already out on the attack on this one, saying uh, it's impossible to project where liquefied natural gas will be in a few years, let alone 30 years down the road. He also says the B.C. Liberals have had a very poor track record at predicting how much the province will get for natural gas. They were dramatically wrong over six months in terms of natural gas revenues. By the way, in that budget debate, Bruce Ralston, the finance critic for the NDP, said clearly they were overstating natural gas revenues, not 10 years in the future, which you, I think we would all acknowledge would be difficult to predict, but in the fiscal year they were in. And Adrian Dix has also announced some plans for if he becomes Premier. He's saying that Don Wright would become the Deputy Minister to the Premier in an event that the BC NDP forms government. So as his party continues to lead by as many as 20 points in some polls, uh, Dix already making plans for what a Premier's office would look like if uh, he wins in May. Well, they say in politics and in life, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. That might be dangerous for Dix. Yeah, uh, Dix has been laying out a lot of plans, Daniel, over the last few weeks of what an NDP government would look like. I think he's trying to get himself prepared in case he is elected, but there's still an election to be run. Insiders within the B.C. Liberals are saying that Premier Christy Clark is a voracious campaigner. That's where she's best during that four-week cycle where she'll be going straight up against Dix uh, in debates and also at people's doorsteps. She will show that that's where she's strongest and will cut into that uh, massive gap that uh, now exists in the polls. All right, Richard, thank you. You're welcome. Well, we want to dig a little deeper now into just how things are shaping up in British Columbia, especially on how the opposition is reacting to the throne speech. I mean, there are a lot of economic questions in the lead up to the provincial election. So for that, let's bring in the NDP candidate who is squaring off against Premier Christy Clark in her riding. He's no stranger to politics or hot topics for that matter. David Eby, the former head of the BC Civil Liberties Association. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's begin with the projections, the revenue projections that the Liberals made in the throne speech with regard to liquefied natural gas, or we'll call it LNG from here on in. Believable projections? Well, there are some very bold claims uh, from the Liberals, especially from a party that was off by not half a million dollars, but half a billion dollars in a six month period in the fiscal year that they were actually in to say, oh, and don't worry everybody, in three years, we're gonna have this wonderful fund of money. We'll be able to maybe even get rid of sales taxes. It'll be a wonderful fantasy land that we'll all be living in. The reality is these projects are years from being completed. They haven't been green lighted by any of the oil companies that are supposed to be involved. And the Premier didn't even talk about the environmental costs of fracking that are very controversial in the North among First Nations and among residents in my constituency. And, and therein lies the question, because on the one hand, you can have perhaps some questions about the Liberals' economic projections or revenue projections based on LNG terminals that, as you say, very correctly, have yet to be built, never mind approved by, by authorities or reviewed by authorities. They're still in the project stage or, or even the planning stage. But that said, on the other hand, I'm not sure exactly where the NDP stands on whether the industry should be developed or should not be developed. 
Well, the NDP certainly said that the industry uh, needs to be developed responsibly and they're uh, in uh, talks with First Nations and other interested groups about how that happens in a responsible way. But what we're hearing from the Liberals is uh, there's only one way forward for the province in terms of economic development. We're going to put all of our uh, money into this uh, liquid natural gas plan. Uh, I've got people in my riding that work in the film industry and high tech in education uh, and uh, we hear about the skills shortage in many different industries across the province uh, and yet uh, the Premier uh, seems to have abandoned entirely her own comprehensive jobs plan and just said, well, uh, hopefully not natural gas is going to pay off in a number of years. Well, that's, uh, I'm afraid, uh, not what I'm hearing at the doorstep in terms of what's concerning people. They want and need jobs now. The Liberals have certainly put down markers when it comes to the natural gas industry that uh, I mean, pending the approvals and the process that needs to take place there, they want to see the industry developed pretty much as quickly as it can within the rules that are in place. Is that also the NDP's policy or are you talking about slower development or perhaps even a smaller industry than the Liberals envision? Well, what the NDP is talking about is a comprehensive plan for the entire province in terms of developing the economy in which liquid natural gas is one part of a greater whole. We're also talking about important things like the environment and climate change. And if you are going to run full speed ahead with li liquid natural gas, how are we going to meet our climate goals? What are you developing in terms of sustainable jobs going forward uh, that are going to be copacetic and consistent with a sustainable environment and, a, and a, a green province that we've heard from both sides of the house is incredibly important, not just to uh, the NDP and to liberals, but to everybody in the province and uh, our children and grandchildren. So to just say, oh, we're, we're going full speed natural gas and, and not talk about uh, the other areas of our economy that are so important to people and that are in fact environmentally sustainable. And I, I can think again of film and high tech as being critical areas that need attention and, and have been neglected by this government. Now, when it comes to government revenues and balancing budgets, uh, there has been quite a tussle I've noticed in the last weeks between the NDP and the B.C. Liberals uh, on that very issue. And uh, your party has gone on the attack when it comes to uh, balanced budgets and whether the government will really manage provincial finances the way that it should. But when the NDP was in power, I don't recall NDP, I don't recall provincial uh, coffers being, um, to put it politely, all that healthy. Well, I think the NDP has set out a very practical plan for uh, where we're going with the economy and, uh, and uh, in terms of our plans for uh, the budget. And a sustainable budget going forward is one not where you have a fire sale of public assets uh, in order to balance the budget. We're hearing that the Liberals are planning on selling, for example, a 15-acre parcel in Surrey that was earmarked for the expansion of Surrey Memorial Hospital, uh, which they're looking at selling off in a, a desperate attempt to say, oh, we have a balanced budget. The NDP is committed to balancing the budget over the business cycle. But we certainly don't understand this short-term view of the Liberals to sell assets that are going to be needed. Surrey's not shrinking, it's growing. Uh, they're going to be needed in the long term. We need to plan for the future and we need a sustainable budget plan, not one that mm. uh, for political purposes is, uh, is being balanced with a fire sale of public assets. David Eby, that's all the time we have. Thank you. Thanks for having me.